1863, we're at the command post. The map is laid out in front of us. Here you have the town of Gettysburg. The Federal Army will be coming in on this road, this road, and this road. Lee's Army will be coming in primarily, almost exclusively, on this road. It's Chambersburg Pike. There will be a couple divisions coming in early in the morning from the north. To familiarize yourself with the map, Gettysburg, Culp's Hill, this is Seminary Ridge, Cemetery Hill, Cemetery Ridge, Little Round Top, Round Top, and the Devil's Den. This is the Southern Army as it will arrive, Heth's Division first, Ewell's Corps with his first two divisions will be coming on here later in the morning. The Union begins with Buford's Cavalry, just south of Penn's College. Let's zoom in and see how day one falls out. Scouts have divulged the approach of Lee's army. Buford's Cavalry moves up the road to investigate. Lean elements of A.P. Hill's Corps, racing to Gettysburg, spot the Union Cavalry on the hill and deploy into line. A.P. Hill's men attack. The cavalry hold up A.P. Hill's advance as they slowly give ground. He wonders if they have any idea that the whole army is about to descend on them. Scouts report seeing dust clouds of more Union troops approaching. And A.P. Hill thinks to himself, Fine. We'll take them too. It's past mid-morning. Everyone's racing troops up as fast as they can. A.P. Hill drives home the assault. Pender's division joins A.P. Hill. A Union general spotted manning the barricades outside of Gettysburg. The cavalry drives off the initial assault and then falls back. Reynolds stays in line with his own division. He manages a fighting retreat and the South are bloodied. It's late morning, almost lunchtime, and A.P. Hill f pours fresh troops into the fighting. And Lee arrives and confers. After a hard morning of fighting, Reynolds sends Buford's cavalry off to scout off of the Union right trying to determine if there's any more troops coming in from any other direction. Ewell's Corps arrives and begins deploying. Lee confers with Hill and says, if those people think they're gonna hold here, let them think that. To himself, he wishes Stuart were here, so he had a better feel for where everyone was and what was going on. The fighting on Seminary Ridge. John Reynolds has fallen in his defense of Gettysburg, but the Confederate drive has been held up and they have paid for their ground dearly. It is now early afternoon. On towards mid-afternoon, Lee is dismayed to see another Union Corps arrive. A.P. Hill's artillery barrage sees the 1st Corps troops stumbling back through Gettysburg. Lee confers with Ewell and says, Attack! Attack! Push them now! Ewell races his troops forward and brings another division up the road and forms them into line. More federal troops appear on our right. Ewell's attack east of Gettysburg. The stunned Union troops fall back. It's late afternoon. Ewell's men drive hard. Lee rides over to confirm with Hill. A.P. Hill and Lee confer, and they have a plan. Pender's division attacks, supported by what remains of Heth's division. The artillery has moved forward. 
With heavy losses, the federal troops are pushed back. A.P. Hill has only a shadow of his corps left. It's after dinner. Ewell is relieved to see that Johnson's division is arriving, along with his much-desired artillery. He sends early in Rhodes to clear the center. A.P. Hill firms up the remainder of his corps. And now we have the early evening combat. Desperate fighting. Horrible losses. No one is in control in the center. A.P. Hill fires one more time into the Union left. One last round for the day. He follows it up with an assault on the line. Fearing any more attacks today to be fruitless with his exhausted troops, Ewell secu secures Culp's Hill for the night and brings up the rest of his troops. A.P. Hill's attack. And his exhausted troops are driven back. There can't be much left in that part of the Union line. As it gets on towards evening, there's time for one last drive. But dare they try anything? A.P. Hill sets his line, gets ready for the evening. After a hard day's fight, everyone does indeed to be set, seem to be settling in early for an evening. And here's an end of day look at the battlefield. These are just detachments. The Union will have four batteries of artillery and five infantry divisions arriving overnight, and six more infantry divisions on day two. Union Army is compact. The Confederate Army is stretched out and bloodied. The Union still has three more corps to bring on by morning. All the South can hope for is the rest of Longstreet's corps later in the day. What do you think the odds are on day two?